Oh no. I'm too old for this. Hello and thank you for being here. Happy Valentine's Day. You're probably watching this after Valentine's Day, but this video was unexpected but inspired by Noelle Gallagher. I'll link to her. She did a Cupid book tag and I loved the questions and um, basically it's a series of romancy kind of questions. You could watch it at any time, not just Valentine's Day, but I do have my Valentine's made by my daughters behind me. That one says mama, which just like. I also <laughs> have their candy. So they had their Valentine's Day party on Friday and they just got so much candy. So, so much candy. They've eaten a ton and there's still a ton left. Help them out and taste test. And as I answer the questions, taste test a candy lets you know what is horrible and what is wonderful. Um, you've probably tasted all these candies before. I will answer the first question and start with a real nice chocolate. These questions all come from Noelle. I'll link to her video so you can answer them too. I'd love to hear your answers. So the first one is what is the perfect candy to eat while reading? The only correct answer is peanut M&Ms. They are perfection. They don't melt on you. Uh, they don't get anywhere. There are no crummies because you pop them right in your mouth, chew them in your mouth. Regular M&Ms are okay. Peanut butter M&Ms are fine, but a peanut M&M is the perfect mix of health food, peanuts, and chocolate. And the second choice would be chocolate covered raisins. Don't at me. Chocolate covered raisins are amazing. You're just wrong if you think otherwise. The problem is, is that they don't have a candy coated shell. Now, if they made a M&M chocolate covered raisin, I'd be there because you need the shell to protect your fingers. Otherwise it gets a little melty. Peanut M&Ms. Best thing for watching, for reading books, best thing for watching movies. I don't want to discuss it anymore. So the first chocolate was actually sent to me um, by my stepmom. Uh, she's my bonus mom. And she, uh, there was a whole box of chocolates and this tells us what they all are. And it's from the Supernatural Chocolate Company. This is a chocolate company in Grants Pass, Oregon. This video is not sponsored. This is just, she sent me chocolates and I'm trying it. Ooh, this is lavender. So it's wrapped up so that the lavender doesn't get all, all over everything else. So let's try it. Mmm. Nice chocolate outside. Inside is so aromatic because it's lavender. It like fills your whole head with that lavender scent, which if you don't like lavender, you're not gonna eat a lavender chocolate. The chocolate is a really dark chocolate. It's a raw chocolate. It's really dark, which I like, but it has more of that bitter undertones, like a dark cup of coffee, which is what I drink. I like my coffee like super dark, super intense. I like my chocolate 60% or higher. No milk chocolate for me. The next question is what is your favorite song? No, what is a song that reminds you of your favorite romance or is just a romantic song? Now, I should say here, I don't read a lot of romances. That's what I thought when I started recording. And then I realized that some of my favorite books are technically romances, like Jane Eyre, Pride and Prejudice. Many books that I like, even though they're not in the genre, they're not genre romance, they have a romantic storyline. One of the most romantic songs is Juliana Theory's Closer to Perfect. And I'll put the Spotify links to both of these songs below. That and Dashboard Confessionals Plain Morning were the songs that Jay put on a mixtape for me in 2000, <laughs> 2000. Uh, and I listened to him over and over and just thought about Jay and he was how dreamy he was. And he introduced me to both Juliana Theory and Dashboard Confessional. And so I love him forever. <laughs> I love these songs forever is what I meant. Um, they'll always be romantic to me. So um, click on them and listen to them if you need some emo 2000s, you know, emo romance. Uh, the Dashboard Confessional song is all about yearning and being far away. And so that first summer that I went to visit my dad in California and Jay was back home, this would be the summer of 2001. Um, I was just turning 19 and I, we wrote letters to each other and we would write the lyrics of the song and the letters and we were very smitten. And so that is like probably the most like romantic period of my life because we were just like, so there was a lot of yearning and there's a lot of yearning in that song. 
The next question is, if you were going to go on the perfect reading date, where would it be? It could be some place specific or someplace more general. Now, my first thought for this was laying in the sunshine, like at a park on a quilt, where you have your quilt, the sunshine, a snack, maybe some peanut M&Ms, and uh, just laying in the sunshine. And then Noelle started talking about being in Ireland, and I was like, oh, wow, well, if I could go anywhere, why am I just going to the park, sitting in a coffee shop or a tea shop in Edinburgh, uh, reading, which I did a few times when we went to um, England and Scotland back in 2016. That's dreamy. I like that too. Okay, we should try another candy. I'm gonna go for conversation hearts. By the way, these are all candies that my five and six year old got attached to Valentine's. We did not do Valentine candy this year. The Valentine's they picked out, one had, uh, it was My Little Pony themed and they had tattoos, temporary tattoos, which those are the worst things ever for a parent because you have to like perfectly fit them into the valentine you have to tear the valentines apart you have to tear the tattoos apart then there are two tiny slots in the valentine where the tattoo goes into and then you have to tape the whole thing closed not tape sticker the whole thing closed with a red heart sticker and if you don't get it in there just right the tattoo falls out and then a kid doesn't have a tattoo which i don't recommend okay so this says let's hang i love a good casual conversation heart this one says totes, one of my favorite words. I, I think these are gonna taste like chalk. I haven't had one in 30 years. Oh no. Oh, this is gonna break my jaw. I'm too old for this. No, the taste isn't bad, but the texture is awful. What's the best friendship you've read in a book? I just read at the beginning of this year, the audiobook of Grady Hendrix, My Best Friend Exer My Best Friend's Exorcism. My Best Friend's Exorcism. That friendship was so great. It's like the friendships. I felt like what he captured is the friendships you have in high school with your girlfriends where you are, you know each other so well. You know each other inside and out. You've been knowing each other since you were kids and you've gone to school together and you know when something's wrong and the rest of the world can be like, no, nothing's wrong. She's just having a hard time maybe she's into drugs and you're like no something is wrong the very end the thing that saves the friend is so beautiful and like I teared up because it's so friendship it's so just ah, that friendship you have with your high school or college girlfriends where you were just like everything is everything everything piled on top of everything, every memory, every song, every movie, it's everything that has created the like third thing of your friendship. I, I just loved it so much. <laughs> Next question, this is a weird one. <laughs> create the perfect bouquet for your favorite book or character. Now, I realized when thinking about this, that one of the romances I read, because I'm so basic, <laughs> is Outlander. And I loved it. And I, I mean, it was, I had to skim some parts, the abuse parts, um, but I loved that romance. <laughs> and this was, I read it long before the show was being made. And I read a couple of the follow-up, the sequels, um, but she is the first character that came to mind for needing a bouquet because it follows a nurse that's thrown back in time to the Highlands in Scotland. And um, she like takes care of people's medical needs a lot in the old days because she has this knowledge of plants and herbs. So she's a perfect person to go to a bouquet. So I think Jamie would bring her the bouquet of, um, I just had some lavender. Lavender's incredibly healing. I have a rosemary um, and it would have uh, nettles and which nettles are like, you know, not fun to touch, but are incredibly like potent. And what else? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say it's spring and so there's a few daffodils and um, lilac bushes. I think both of those things probably grow in Scotland. Some heather from the moors. I don't know if heather blooms in spring. Daffodils, um, just because they're so happy. And uh, some lilac because the smell is just amazing. And back then, with the bathroom situation and the showering situation, I mean, there's no showers, y you need the most smelly things. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this question I really liked. What's a romance that you don't necessarily need a whole sequel for, but you like want to check in on the characters? So this is actually not romance books, <laughs> but there are two books that are family sagas that I love 
the marriage portrayal in them. The first one is Apples Never Fall by Leanne Moriarty and I don't feel like I heard a lot of people talk about this even though she's a popular author. It is a it is a book that follows this marriage the the in in modern time the mom disappears and the grown children are like did dad do something with mom where is mom at and but it flashes back to their relationship and as their marriage continued and they had kids like the ways that they made compromises and the ways they didn't make compromises and where the mom kind of is in her state of mind and it really keeps you guessing what happened to mom until right up to the end and then when you figure it out you're like of course of course that's where this was all leading and I just really loved the marriage portrayal in that one. The other one that I think of as loving the romance in it is The Most Fun We Ever Had. And that book follows a marriage through years, decades of them being young and in love and both in school and then one sacrifices part of their career for the other and then they have kids and then they accidentally have more kids than they expected and I think they end up with four kids altogether. Again, the compromises, the decisions that they make, the decisions that they think they're on the same page on but they're really not on the same page on. I just felt, <laughs> I, I've, I've been with my husband for over 20 years. We've been married for 18 years this summer and I just love books that really get at the complexity of like a long relationship and that get at the like still love and commitment and power of something that's lasted that long the same way that like a long friendship just has this becomes its own third thing and so both of those books I would love to just check in on this couple and I just want to see how they're doing now are they okay next question what date in a book or movie would you most like to go on hands down when Harry met Sally it's just a friend date they go to the museum uh waiter is there any pepper in my popper gosh that scene I want to go on that date. I, I, I love a date in an art museum where you're like looking and you're kind of together but you're kind of not together and you don't have to talk a lot and um, you just like have this like emotional sense experience of being in front of great art and then later you can talk about it and what were your favorite parts and it's like hey did you see this? Check this out. I love that feeling. Love it. It's so great. Okay the next question is what is your favorite nickname from a romance? I can't think of any nicknames in anything ever. I racked my brain for this one. I can't think of it. And the last question is what is your most anticipated new romance in 2022? Well, like I said, I don't read a lot of romances, so I don't know a ton of what's coming out, but I do know that Book Lovers by Emily Henry, any, any book set in the book world, and I'm in. So they fall in love, books, I'm there. Totally there. I don't that's all I need to know. I enjoy the romances I read but I don't read a lot so if you want to recommend a romance to me below please let me know. I would love to hear about it. That's it for the Cupid book tag. Thank you to Noelle for coming up with this tag. Uh, thank you to my beautiful daughters for making the Valentines featured in this and for bringing home so much candy. Thanks for watching and I hope you had fun. If you answer this tag comment below and let me know. Oh happy Valentine's Day and happy reading. There's a lot of gum in here and a lot of suckers, which I, I wasn't gonna eat a sucker on camera. That's a step too far.